Mm -mm -mm. It's the Morning Cryptos. This is Mark Shepard. So let's do the cryptos. We got Bitcoin. Looks like Bitcoin is forming itself into a little top. We have resistance. Oh, what a surprise. We have resistance. Sort of there. Move it up. We got all the resistance at, uh, what is the number? Four. 44.82, so really the resistance is 46, because, I mean, 44 freaked people out, and we're just kind of getting used to it. Again, this is the hypnosis of money. Once a new price is established, it takes a little while to kind of go, oh, this is what it costs now, you know? And so that's that's why you have these buildups, and then you have these kind of consolidations or these sideways trading ranges. That's my theory, anyway, and it's a... Uh, it's a hypnotic theory. <laughs> so let's uh, let's look at Bitcoin. If you think Bitcoin is going to go to 5,000, this is not a bad place to get in. If you think Bitcoin is going to go back to 2,000, this is a bad place. <laughs> okay, so I mean, and again, that's the market is diverging opinion. Some people think it's going up. Some people think it's going down. Right? Buy or sell. There are buyers and sellers. And... Uh, Right now seems to me the moment when the masses are rushing into Bitcoin. And uh, so it's the beginning of a serious crowd action, <laughs> a serious bubble. Uh, and just remember, these go up and they come back. Um, so if you want to get in at this crazy high price, you can. There's always an opportunity. Um, but that's it. Um, personally, I'm really frustrated with how slow Bitcoin is. I had a conversation with a friend of mine, and he was like, he was kind of in a rant mode, and he was like, yeah, I go someplace, uh, I, I take out my card to buy a pizza, and uh, the thing says it, it will, the transaction will be approved in 24 hours. Like, no, it doesn't work. We want instant transactions. We want instant transactions. And as brilliant as the blockchain is, as brilliant as Bitcoin is, it's not working. It's not actually working very well as a currency at the moment. It's working pretty well as a, uh, a tulip mania, <laughs> but we'll see. So anyway, that's my philosophy on Bitcoin. Let's move on. <laughs> Ethereum people, Ethereum just keeps going up a little bit every day, going up a little bit every day. It's not in a rush, but it's moving up. And it is a another one of these, you know, what am I saying? It's really early. <laughs> it's... It's in the same kind of category as Bitcoin in that it is slow as well. When I made a transfer, I exchanged some Bitcoin for some Ethereum the other day. It took literally all day. And again, there's a lot of stuff built on the Ethereum blockchain, so we need it to work. We need it to be effective and efficient, right? And um, so let's look at the one hours. Not a bad place to get in on Saturday morning, the 26th of August. This is day 27 of my challenge to explore the world of cryptos. The Crypto Cranker's Guide to the Galaxy of Greed and Grooviness. Uh, so, yeah. This is not a bad place to get in. Right here. It's at 329-ish. Um, and it was trading higher. This is a 30 minute chart. So these are the little dips that you can get in on. And uh, I might actually pick up a little Ethereum this morning. I'm kind of liking, I 
I'm liking what I'm seeing with Ethereum. I'm not like crazy liking it, but I'm liking it. Augur. <laughs> I checked out what Augur is, and I'm still trying to figure out what Augur is. It's kind of like I remember when I first, someone first showed me Twitter, and I'm like, huh? And Augur is actually a prediction model. <laughs> It's a place where you can kind of go as a, as and be part of a crowd predicting all kinds of stuff, like who's going to win the election, who's going to win the Super Bowl, who's going to win this, who's going to do that. Uh, what will will Bitcoin be at 5,000 by December 31st or, you know, any of these different things. And you can actually make money kind of weighing in with your opinion on that. Uh, and if you're wrong, you don't make anything. If you're right, you do make something. Um, so that that's my newbie first impression of what Augur is. And it's going fucking crazy here. It's, <laughs> it's really moving up. Uh, it, had a, uh, it had a bubble of pop at 38 is the top. And um, 36 is really the kind of the preliminary top. So I'm going to put one in there, you know, like you could say 35, 36, somewhere around here. Um, and it looks like it wants to retrace that and get moving. And again, remember, as we learn more about these, right, if, if you're beginning to be aware of the crypto world, you know, we all start with Bitcoin, then we start with, then we get into Ethereum, then there's Litecoin, and then these other things that we're just like wrapping our heads around, and, and again, you want to be in early. You want to be in on something where the rest of the world hasn't quite discovered it yet, but you have, right? At the same time, there's a lot of these that are trying to be discovered that are, that are just, you know, puff pieces. But Augur actually seems to have, you know, they have a nice website and it's a new idea. And there's a lot of these new ideas coming through. Which one's going to be the next Amazon which one's going to be the next AOL? Sometimes I feel like Bitcoin is going to be the next AOL or MySpace, you know, and that these second, third, and fourth generation currencies or uh, altcoins are going to give the establishment, <laughs> the crypto establishment, a run for their money. And change is with us, people. Things are changing rapidly. So let's look at the one hours. If you wanted to get some auger, I might actually get a little auger. A little later um, and uh, just for the fun of it even though it's kind of on a run up I'll find a little place to get in like this is not a bad place to get in a little auger and I'm gonna see if I can get some in the new uh, Exodus wallet called Eden uh, the one minutes not not really the best place to get in so I'm gonna keep an eye on auger and if I see a good entry place I will otherwise I'm just gonna watch it from the sidelines for a little while um, it seems like there's time right it's not you don't want to rush into these and whenever I've rushed in I've gotten my ass kicked so just remember the rush that that adrenaline rush is not your friend <laughs> We want to be as emotionless as possible. All right, Dash. Oh, Dash. Dash. Mm -hmm. I'm like a Dash because I got in here just a little bit below 200. I got in at like in the, in the high 190s in the sideways trading range. Let me again, <laughs> let me talk about the sideways trading range. This is the best pattern for any newbie to get in on. If something's trading... And it's and it's hitting resistance, on re, you know in repeated ways, and yet there is a trend from below pushing up. The bottoms are all higher, right? That is, there's just there's no other signal that is as sweet that a breakout is imminent. <laughs> and again, I use the image of holding a a, a, a beach ball, you know under the water it wants to pop up and when it pops up sometimes it'll get some loft it'll it'll pop up into the air so dash is looking good but not to get in at the moment nope do not get in not 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 it's it's on the move people 
And I, I think Dash has the potential to really be a currency that we use, you know, that we use frequently. It's fast. It's got a good team, blah, 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 all those foundational fundamentals, it, you know. And they, they actually, they have a whole different deal where they, they pay people who are supporting and working on the, uh, the currency. It's not, it's not a nonprofit. It's, you know, they're in it to win it, right? You know, it's not just a bunch of people arguing with each other. It's a team that seems to know what they're doing because they've looked at Bitcoin and Ethereum and they're like, oh, can we do better? Yeah. And that's why being first to market is not always the best because there's still stuff to work out. But we need a Bitcoin to be first to market and we need the world to wake up to it. Um, and we need to be poetic about it and enthusiastic about it because that sets the scene and the stage for all this other stuff. And it's just like the internet at first, what do we do with that, huh? And all of a sudden, you know, Business after business, uh, field after field gets eaten by the internet. You know, so this is the change that is coming. It's it is it is here. You know, and the question is, how can we as individuals benefit from it, learn from it, and and get in on it in a way that is sensible, not insane? Yeah. So just looking through the one hours, the thirties. And the one minute's not the time to get in on Dash. It is making a move right now. It's really moving. So, and that's what we like about the volatility is what makes it profitable, right? All right, let's look at Litecoin. Mm -hmm. And look at Litecoin, right? There is so much pent up energy here, people. Like we had, we had our multiple tops. We had our multiple tops, boom, boom, boom. We had a triple top, right? Quadruple if you count this one. And now we have a double top. Now the top is here, right? So it's doing the same thing, but in a little bit larger scale. And once again, the bottoms are all higher, right? If you have not gotten any Litecoin, this might be a good time. I might get some more. I might pick up a little more Litecoin today. We have a nice little, on the one hours, a nice little sideways range. You could get in at 50.4-ish. It's a Saturday morning. It might be quiet. You might be able to get in. You know, my prediction, uh, where do I think it's going to go? You know, it'd be nice if the chart went a little higher so I could see where it has to go. Let's see if I can get the chart to go a little higher. I mean, Litecoin is cranking people. It just doesn't seem to be cranking when you compare it to Dash, right? Uh, but it's cranking. And it's supposedly definitely going to benefit from all the SegWit nonsense. And... Uh, I, I think, you know, I think it's going to really blast off. I think it's going to go to 100. That's, that's my gut. As I just look at this day after day and look at this pattern, the trend is your friend, people. We have a, a pretty nice sideways range. We have resistance. And I'm probably looking for, it'll probably make a triple top before it, before it moves. So. <clears throat> but when it comes back, it goes up and comes back. It never comes back uh, at, a, at a lower price. It's always coming back at a higher price on the bottoms, right? And so now the bottom is around 50, right? Not too long ago, the bottom was around 38. Then it was around 39. Then it was around 42. So to me, this is... You know, and I, I think Litecoin really might be what they say it's intended to be, which is the currency that everybody uses, right? Maybe it's Dash, maybe it's Litecoin. Pretty sure it's not going to be Monero if they can't figure out how to get it in a wallet, you know? Um, 
And so we're starting to see what, what, are the, what are the things about a currency that make it desirable. And convenience and speed are pretty much the main things. Dependability, uh, ex, you know, uh, acceptability. You know, so there's got to be people that want it and accept it. So there's, it's kind of a little dance. And it, it is so hypnotic. It is so hypnosis, people. <laughs> All right. So Litecoin. I did it. I want it. I think it's going to go. I got really excited about four days ago because it looked like it was going to make its move and then it came back. But still exciting. It's still a good a good chart, man. It's looking good. Let's look at Monero. Speaking of Monero. Oh, boy. Look at Monero. This is what I kept hoping Litecoin would do, right? <laughs> and I don't have any Monero. Because I keep... I go to Poloniex and I'm like, it's so confusing and it's so just I that my particular neurology it freaks out and I, I'm gonna have to buckle up and climb into Poloniex and uh, maybe next week will be my week of exploring Poloniex and uh, and making some videos about that. But uh, I want to get some Monero, but not now because it's not the time to freaking get it. It's the time to have gotten it, right? And that's, again, if you see any of these currencies with one of these sideways ranges, I mean, look at the sideways trading range. And look at the bottoms, right? You had a whole scene here where the bottoms kept getting higher and higher. Over here, of course, the bottoms kept getting lower and lower, right? So... If the bottoms are getting lower and lower and lower, it's probably not about to move, but it might be time to buy. If you can find, you know, if you can kind of watch it and notice it, it is going more sideways, but it's starting to go down, right? The average person goes, oh, I don't want it now. Well, the average trader goes, yeah, I'll pick some up. It's on sale, right? That's the mindset. And now Monero's cranking and I'm like, oh, I want some Monero, right? That's newbie mind thinking, people. Now is not the time to get into Monero, but that's our our instinct. And some of this is counterintuitive, right? You have to always be aware of your own greed. And that's not a bad thing. It's just like we are programmed neurologically to always want more, right? And it's part of nature. It keeps the organism eating, Right, it keeps the organism growing and expanding. It's the exponential nature of the universe, people. <laughs> and here it is, demonstrated over and over and over again. You can look at anywhere uh, when a virus goes viral, right? When a thought goes viral, all of a sudden there's an explosion and exponentially, whoom, you know, compound interest. These are fundamentals of the universe. So, wow, the towsa gauza. I like Monero on the one hours, nope. On the 30 minutes, nope. On the one minutes, yeah, you might be able to get in, but you're probably going to get yourself hosed and then it's going to come back, right? So do not. I would, this is advice to myself. I'm not giving anybody advice. I have to remember that because they will come after you, you know, if you're just a person. Uh, so, yeah. I'm not going to be buying any Monero until it makes a significant retracement. And that's it. That's it for today. Uh, I'm interested in this Augur stuff, and I'm going to learn more about Augur, and I'm going to learn more about Poloniex, and I guess that's kind of the next step, the next expansion of my comfort zone. You know, this is, we're coming down to the end of, um, week number what the hell week am i week is this week four yeah this is week four of my 90 day challenge so i'm about a third of the way through uh my my public exploration of cryptocurrencies and if any of this is remotely interesting to you i hope it is if not that's okay too but if you've watched this far please subscribe i really appreciate that give me a thumbs up if you like this and this is the hypnosis of money i'm exploring cryptocurrencies in the context of the human mind and how 
the whole movement, this whole revolution that's literally happening before our eyes that we are in. It's a peaceful revolution. It's a transformation. I want to explore how that is affecting people. And it's really interesting. I, I've kind of I've kind of kind of pulled back from all my social connections for this last couple of weeks because I've just been so deep in this and obsessed by it. And I went out to uh, a little gathering on Thursday night and uh, people said, Mark, where you been? What are you doing? I'm like, I, I'm, I'm doing cryptocurrencies. And I just got so excited and the people were like, what are they? You know, what's that? And it's like the curiosity level is there. People have, the average person has pretty much heard of Bitcoin. So now it's like the, the curiosity lit the, that. The curiosity light has been lit. The candle of curiosity has been lit <laughs> in millions and millions and millions of people. And their thoughts are now going to come into the market. Their behaviors, their intentions, their curiosity, their desire for a better life. Boom, boom. But all of these things, you cannot discount them. This is not just something that is mathematical. Yes, it is. But it's also a human, it has human impact. It has an effect on everything, on the structure of our very society. So to me, that's what's interesting. And uh, hopefully someone else is interested in it too. And at the same time, I, I like being able to uh, explore new ideas and possibly even make an abundant living from the comfort of my own home or wherever I am in the world and to be able to go anywhere I want and take my money with me. And essentially, you can memorize your 12 words <laughs> and you can walk across a border with nothing in your hands or in your pockets and still have your money. That is the big revolution, people. And it's we're in, we're in good times. This is the wild, wild west. This is the gold rush in Alaska, in California, in South America. This is doctors and lawyers and funeral directors and uh, singers and uh, dentists and garbage men and mail carriers throwing down their stuff and going to the gold fields and going, I'm going to make my fortune. And some of them will go bust. Some of them will become incredibly wealthy and some of them will just do okay. But that is the human experience. And that's all I'm going to say. Let's uh, let's wrap this up. If you like this, please subscribe. Please give me a thumbs up. Please share. Please leave a comment below. Let me know what you're thinking. I really appreciate your thoughts. And uh, this has been The Morning Cryptos. It's Saturday, August 26th. And uh, it's actually really chilly here in upstate New York. It's like a beautiful early October morning. And uh, wherever you are, hope you enjoy the day. Be safe out there. And... Pay attention, people, to your emotions when you're in these markets. All right? Be safe, be groovy, and start the music. <laughs>